these questions. Today we'll start from Ayah 29 of Surah Nisa. So the first student we have is uh, George. What is your name? Fahmida. 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 Okay, Miss Fahmida, read from Ayah 29. I was a billah him in a shaitan irajim. Bismillah irrahman irrahim. O oh, you believe, O oh, you who believe, eat not up your property among yourselves unjustly. Accept it. Be a trade amongst you by mutual consent. And do not kill yourselves or nor kill one another. Surely Allah is most merciful to you. So you can take money or property or wealth or anything from any other person only through trade or through mutual consent. Mutual consent, you can call it gift as well. So mm -hmm. only two possible ways. Either it is trade or either it is kind of gift. Mm -hmm. So you cannot forcefully take anything from anyone else. Even Karze Hasana? Karze Hasana is a thing which we take for a short period of time yes mm -hmm. so here the, uh, these are for permanent things which we take mm -hmm. something permanently so this i is for permanent things okay the next one and uh, whoever commits that though that through um, aggression and injustice we shall we shall cast him uh, into the fire and that is easy for Allah so basically if you take anything from anyone else let's suppose just for the example if Fahmida steal some money from Ummu Ahmad then this me this ayah tells you that Allah will cast you into fire or if today sometime people also take something from other person through courts, through fraud, through deceit. Even in, in that case, Allah will cast that person into fire. If someone has taken money from the children and wife uh, and uh, transferred everything on his name, what, what is the punishment for that? Same thing. Allah will cast him into fire. Mm -hmm. So any money, anything, if you take some fun from someone else unjustly, Allah will call. No, the family, immediate family, like from wife and children and just transfer in their name and then just leave. So that is also the punishment of, from Allah. I repeat your question. If the husband takes away the money, land, everything from the wife and children and leave them alone and um, everything is transferred in his name, so what is the punishment for that? Same thing. In this situation, he took everything from them through deceit. So through deceit yeah. is where Allah will cast him into fire. Because this does not belong to him. He just deceit them and he took everything them. So, no, it's a family. It's a family. Like husband, children, they are all family, right? And if they take away something and leave without giving anything to the children and the wife. So that is the punishment too. Same thing. Let me understand it. So let's for the example, Mr. Umar mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and let's suppose Fatima his wife. Okay. Mm -hmm. And let's suppose children are also is a son. Mm -hmm. And Shumela is the daughter. Mm. So what I understood from your question that maybe Fatima has a job or maybe from inheritance she has bought some wealth like house. Am I right? 
No, they both earned. They both earned the money. Okay. They both lived together. They made money. They bought houses. They have everything together. Wealth, everything. They both. Um, husband didn't work that much. Only the wife worked more. Okay, so, so let's suppose after both are... some time. Yeah, after some time taking, seeing all this large amount of money, he decided to just take the money and leave. So what I understood is that so, actually through there is a lot of lies behind me. So it is difficult. So the me. same punishment, same punishment will happen to him again. So let me understand the situation. So both were I have both were having a job. So yeah. together... no, not both. Not both. Only one person was earning and one person was controlling the business. Okay. Only one person was working and earning, and one person was just controlling the business. And whatever comes, he he take it. And then when time came, he just wiped up and ran away. So, the both were uh, doing some business. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. Let me. Uh, can you name the business, please? What business they were doing? Miss Fahmida, is it a real situation or you were just asking? Nila. <laughs> okay. You don't know disturbing me. Let me use some hand free. It's okay, brother. Can I you just now? No, no, it's okay. Just continue with your lesson. Okay. If you want, we can take time. No problem. No. No, no, no. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. okay. We'll do it later. Okay. You can ask me later. I will explain that later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, for this ayah, we need to write the question. Children mm -hmm. were actually disturbing me, so I did not understand the question clearly. Yeah, no, it's okay. Oh, the husband can take back Meher. Okay. It's a different issue. At the time of what divorce. What will happen <clears throat> if someone takes someone else, someone's wealth or property? Through, through fraud, deceit, or aggression. Aggression also means grabbing, or it is also yeah, means yeah. robbing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think this is this was my question. So yes, so. In the answer, you will write according to Ayah 30 of Surah Nisa, mm -hmm. Allah mm -hmm. will put that person in fire. Inshallah. According to Ayah 30, Allah will put that person in fire. Next student, Ms. Mohammed. Repeat the question and answer. What, uh, what will happen if someone takes someone's wealth or property through fraud, deceit or aggression? According to Ayah 30 of Surah Nisa, Allah will put that person in fire. Okay, now let's take an example from real life. Mr. Umar and Fatima were married happily. They both were doing some job. And together they were running their house expenses and everything. And together they were saving money. 
every month they were saving one hundred dollars. Okay, Miss uh, Um Muhammad, how much money they were saving every month? Miss Hoor. Miss Fahmida. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. How much money they were saving every month? Uh, Hundred dollars. So together they were earning, together they were uh, spending money on their family and together they were saving $100. Per month. Time passes by. After some year, they managed to save ten thousand dollars. Okay. They yeah. managed to save ten hundred dollars in their bank, and bank mm -hmm. account was on the name of Mr. Umar. So they saved this money together. <clears throat> but uh, <clears throat> the bank account was on the name of Mr. Umar. Fatma trust did her husband a lot, so she never bothered any linger. So in reality, this money belongs to Fatma as well and Umar as well. But on paper, in in the eyes of law, this money belongs to Umar because it is in the bank account of Umar. Umar. Oh Omar met another lady. Her name is Sara. They both fell in love with each other. And after some time, Omar decided to divorce Fatima. And he also left his children. And Omar started to hate Fatima as well. Now, Islamically, he should give at least five half of the money to, F Fatima, to Fatima because they earned this money together. They did everything together and their income was same. But he did not give anything to her and he kept all money with him. And Fatima cannot do anything legally because the bank account is in on the name of Umar. Mm. So Umar grabbed all the money. So according to this Quranic ayah, Allah will put Mr. Umar in fire. Okay. Now another situation in which Umar was earning every money, but Fatma was just a housewife. She was not earning any money. And Umar was saving $100 from his salary every month. And then time passes by, he saved $1,000. And after some years, he met Sarah and he fell in love with Sarah and he started to hate Fatima. Again, he decided to divorce Fatima. So this time, Fatima does not have any right in these $10,000 because Umar earned every money himself. Mm -hmm. But Umar need to give monthly expenditures of Arsal and Shumaila. Okay? He does not need to give anything to Fatima, but every month he must give a monthly expense of all monthly expense of Arsar and Shumela to Fatima. And he will keep this money, $10,000 with himself. Okay? Any question? Any doubt? Next, we have 31.
Miss Four, read the next one. Thank you, Jenny. Good day, Jenny. You see, we Pandra. If you if you avoid the great sins which you are forbidden to do, we shall expire from you your small sins and admit, admit you to noble entrance paradise. Okay. Can you give me an example of big sins like it is mentioned in here or great sins great yeah. sins yeah. like uh, shirk or shirk billah okay shirk is the greatest bad sin okay then anything else um beating up people for money or robbing okay yeah robbing. and murdering killing someone murdering yes killing so these are the examples of great sins any example of small sin just to lie for uh, some like small telling reason. Can lies, lie for some but, small but, reason. Okay, then any other example? Bug biting. Back biting. Then Not um, uh, praying is a, not praying is also a big sin, right? Okay. Not praying in time. Okay. Sometimes if these small sins can also become big sins, major sins. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. What will happen if you avoid great sins? Another definition of great sin is this, that those um, sins are great, which have some punish, uh, punishment, legal punishment in Islamic law. Okay, for example, if you commit these sins in an Islamic country, the Islamic government will punish you. So those are the examples. Those are great sins. Mm -hmm. And if there is no legal punishment for a sin in this life, then it is small sin. Mm -hmm. Except shirk. Shirk is the only sin which uh, does not have punishment in this life okay so what will happen if you avoid great sins then the answer is according to ayah 31 of surah nisa allah will expiate small sins and admit you to paradise oh. Now I will repeat the answer. According to Ayah 31 of Surah Nisa Allah will expiate or forgive small sins and admit you to paradise. Ms. Fahmida, repeat the question and answer. If uh, I have the question is, uh, what will happen if you avoid great sins? 
Aya 31, answer is Aya 31 from Surah Nisa. If you, uh, if you expiate, small sins, uh, expiate with small sins, you will be uh, given entrance to Jannah. Sorry. Sorry. If you avoid, if you avoid major sins, major sins, then you will be Allah. Allah will expiate. Allah will expiate small yes. sins, sins and admit you to paradise. Yes. Okay. Read this saya or surah, read this hadith. And 31? Yes. Narrated Abu Huraira, uh, Razi Allah Ta'ala, no, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, avoid the um, avoid the seven great destructive sins. They the one asked, O oh Allah's Messenger, what are those? What are they? He said, to join partners in worship with Allah. Second, the, to paradise sorcery. Uh, to kill a to kill a person which Allah has forbidden, except for for a just cause, according to Islamic law. Fourth, to to eat up riba usually. Uh, fifth, to eat of the property of an orphan. Sixth, to show one's back to the uh, the enemy and fleeing from the battlefield at the time of fighting. And seventh, the accused cha chest chest a uh, woman who never. Who never even think of anything touching their chast chastity and are good believers. Sahih Al Bukhari, Volume 8, Hadith number 840. So these are the examples of great sins, okay? Mm -hmm. If anybody didn't understand any of these great sins, they can ask me. Next student, Ummu Ahmad. And wish not for the things in which Allah has made some of you to excel others. For men, there is a reward for what they have. For what they have earned, earned and likewise. For women, there is reward for what they have earned and ask Allah of his bounty. Surely Allah is ever all knower of everything. So there are many good things which some person can do and some person can't do. Allah did not give them enough power to do these things. So never wish for such things. Or if you see someone better than you in something and don't be regretful or don't wish extra upon those things. Allah has given everyone different powers and different abilities. Then the next thing is for men and women. Basically, <clears throat> women uh, complain to Prophet Sallallahu that men uh, participate in the holy wars. They earn extra reward from Allah. They will earn extra reward from Allah. At that time, this ayah was revealed that for women, there is a reward for what they have earned. So there are some women which are better than men. Why they are better than men? Because they worship Allah better than other men. For example, Aisha, for example, Khatija. Then, for example, Asya, who was the wife of Firaun. Then Maryam. Then Fatima. 
these are the women who become better than many men just because of their excellent worship. Similarly, you can also become better than men in many things if you excel in your worships. So no need to make any kind of complaint. No need to write any question from this one. Next, uh, who? And to everyone, we have appointed years of their property left by parents and relatives to those also with whom you have made a pledge brotherhood give them their due portion truly allah is ever a witness over all things so this ayah is abrogated so previously when uh, muhajirin migrated from makkah to madina at that time a brotherhood was established so they were given share in inheritance as well but now only but blood relations get share in inheritance so this ayah is not valid anymore because of another ayah which will come later in surah azab inshallah Student, you yeah men are the protectors and maintainers of women uh, because Allah has made on of them to excel the other and because they spend to support them from their means they fought or Righteous women are the one, the one, the one, uh, to Allah and their husbands, and God, uh, in the husbands' absence, what Allah order, orders them to God, uh, their uh, chastity, their husbands' property, as to those women on whose Part you see, you conduct, admit, uh, admonish them first, next, review to share, uh, their best and last, uh, beat them lightly if it is useful, but if they return to obedience, uh, see not against them means of. Annoy and uh, surely a lot is even more high, more great. Yeah, so therefore, the righteous women are devoutly obedient. This ayah tells us that in case of disagreement. The decision making power is in the hand of husband. In case of this agreement, on decision who has the authority to make final decision what are the spelling of decision this one in case of disagreement who has the final authority to make the final decision according to ayah 34 husband has the authority 
to make the final decision. I have 34, sorry. According to the I have 34, husband has the final authority to make the final decision in the house. And the wife must be obedient to him. And the wife must be obedient to him. Next student, Fahmida. Okay. Repeat the question and answer. What will, uh, in case of disagreement on decisions, who has the authority to make final decision? The husband has the final authority to make the decision and the wife have to be obedient to follow the husband. Next thing here is the wife, which is definitely thing the wife need to guard their chastity and husband property in the husband's in the absence of her husband. Then the third thing mm -hmm. is about adultery. If the woman commit adultery, then this thing is also abrogated by another ayah and hadith. So we'll study that hadith later in detail, inshallah. Inshallah. Now, if anybody has any question, they can ask me. Then we will stop the class. So we have only three questions uh, from here, from this ayah. Yes. Mm -hmm. You are next time, inshallah. Masalam. Are you going to record? Uh, send this uh, recording um on the site. Yes, inshallah. Masalam. Masalam. Asalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam.